think my dogs think they're getting this piece, but they're not. I hear the sound of coming of rain. I hear the sound of turkey. <laughs> I don't know. Seems popular elsewhere. <laughs> getting around the holidays and it's time to start making holiday dinners. A lot of people, particularly around Thanksgiving, tend to make turkey. I mean, some people will make ham. Usually you'll make a ham for Christmas, you make a turkey for Thanksgiving, or you might make a turkey for Thanksgiving and for Christmas. But for some reason, people forget about turkeys when Thanksgiving's over. I don't know why. I love the taste of turkey. I tend to forget about it after the holidays are over myself, but, but when I do make it, I always love it. it. It's a great dinner when it's hot. It's good sandwiches afterwards. The first issue when making Thanksgiving turkey is do you brine or don't you brine? Well, brining a turkey will give the meat a little more moisture, a little bit more flavor, but not a lot more flavor. And one of the things it does is it makes the drippings from the turkey very salty because brine has a lot of salt. Well, if you like making gravy using the turkey drippings, you can't really use a brine turkey for that unless you want a really salty gravy. Now, we don't like salt bombs, and uh, we like our gravy not so salty, so we choose not to brine the turkey. However, we do make a stuffing. The stuffing has some beef consomme in it, some other flavors, that actually will brine the turkey from the inside out without it being too salty. It'll make it very flavorful. Ultimately, we've been using this, this stuffing in my family for probably 40 years. Now, the other issue is when you stuff a turkey, all the food safety experts say you shouldn't do that. Well, why? That's because you want to cook the bird to 165 degrees on the white meat, 185 degrees on the dark meat, and the stuffing needs to be 170 degrees in order to be safe. And there's no way, if you're cooking a turkey to 165 on the white meat and 185 on the dark meat, there's no way that the stuffing can get to be 170. Well, I resolve that issue by cooking it in the turkey so it gets the brine from the inside out. Then I pull the stuffing out, I put it in a dish, and I bake it the rest of the way in the oven to get rid of the bacteria that otherwise would build up in the stuffing. You will find this stuffing is very tasty. You will find this turkey is very tasty. I have lots of people who've told me they've never had a turkey that tastes this good. And so let's get started and we'll get going on it. So we've started out by cubing up the bread. We're using about two loaves of bread. We have a whole bunch of different kinds of bread here because it adds a little variety to the stuffing. We have some whole wheat, we have some sourdough, we have some French bread, we have a little bit of white bread. Uh, we tend to be on a keto diet during the week, and then we have a cheat day on the weekends. Well, on the weekends, we can eat whatever we want, so often we're craving bread, and we wind up getting a big loaf of bread to eat on our cheat days. Well, you can't eat a whole loaf of bread on a single day, so we stick the excess in the freezer, and around October or so, I start saving those breads to be used in the stuffing. Here, we've got this bread. Now, you pour beef consomme, and it's Campbell's beef consomme, over the stuffing. That moistens the bread. Now you do want to use beef consomme here and not beef broth because the beef consomme has a slightly richer flavor. It has the gelatin in it. It has a much richer taste and so it makes a difference with the stuffing. You want to now take this all and moisten up all the bread. I will tell you that some of the bread wound up getting very hard, a little bit stale, and that's okay. You want that because that's going to wind up giving texture to your stuffing. Into the bread you add about a cup of pecans. The original recipe used slivered almonds. I like pecans in there. I think he gives it a slightly sweeter flavor. You also want to use two or three chopped celery stalks. And that actually was the original stuffing recipe. It was bread, consomme, slivered almonds, and celery. 
I've added to it since then. I like to put water chestnuts in it because it gives it a nice crunch. Young does not like water chestnuts, so we're not going to use the water chestnuts in it. Instead, I've decided to add in mushrooms. The mushrooms will have a nice little texture and a good flavor. Here I'm using baby bellas. Now, you see in the market, it really doesn't matter what kind of mushrooms you're using. It doesn't matter that much. I'm using baby bellas. They're actually the same thing as the white button mushrooms and the cremini mushrooms. All three of those are the same mushroom. The difference is uh, one is aged more than the other, but they all have the same basic flavor and the only difference is a little bit of age. So you can use whatever mushroom you prefer, or you can use water chestnuts if you prefer a crunch. Also into that, I'm going to add about a quarter cup of dried cherries. And I like the sour cherries. And I'm going to use about, this is about a half cup of dried cranberries. I've also taken two apples and chopped them up into one inch pieces. Actually, I'm just going to use about one and a half apples. And here I'm using the sweet onions. The difference is the uh, sweet onions will not last as long as your typical, what they call storage onions, uh, but they are sweeter. They have a little stronger flavor. I like them. Also, I'm using a quarter cup of chopped parsley. And I'm using fresh thyme. We have thyme and sage in our garden. I'm gonna use both of those. You can use the dried. If you're using dried, I'd say use maybe one to two tablespoons of dried thyme and about a tablespoon of dried sage. Here I used about a quarter cup of fresh thyme and I'm gonna use about 10 sage leaves. And then you wanna mix it all in and it'll be ready to go into the turkey. Okay, now one of the things you wanna do when you're roasting a turkey is you wanna prepare the pan because the stuffing, the veggies, the turkey drippings, they're all gonna to wanna to stick to the bottom of the pan. So I line the pan with aluminum foil and then I spray a non-stick spray on it, which makes everything come off easy. Because you want everything to come off easy because you're going to use it later on for the gravy. So first, go ahead and spray the pan. Now you get your turkey. Um, it's better if you can get a pastured turkey because they taste better. And also the type of turkey you get is going to make a difference in the flavor. But the pastured turkeys are quite expensive, as are heritage brand turkeys. But if you can afford it, it's probably a worthwhile expenditure. It makes a big difference in flavor. If you, all you've got is a supermarket turkey, that'll be fine. When you get a turkey, you want to go ahead and in this part of the turkey, they usually stuff all the giblets. That's the neck, the liver, the heart, all that stuff. Make sure to bring it out. I actually had a friend who didn't know that was in there and left it in there and cooked the turkey. And then when they first sliced it, they got the little plastic bag with all the giblets out of there. That was a lovely Thanksgiving dinner. Well, I learned that before I cooked my first turkey, so I don't do that. Now, you want to go ahead and you stuff your bird. Don't stuff it too tight. You want to put the stuffing in there loosely. Then on this side here, you want to go ahead and you want to stuff that as well. This stuffing, remember, is going to add flavor to your bird. So you want to put it in there. Okay, now your turkey is loosely stuffed. You want to put it in the pan. First, you want to put some flavor on the bottom of your pan. I look to put some whole carrots down there. And these will ultimately flavor your pan drippings and your gravy. So you want to put these on the bottom of the pan. Also, take an onion, quarter up the onion. Put the quarters 
here. Then the giblets that you took out of the neck, and uh, you want to go ahead and you want to put that on the bottom. Okay, the next thing you do, you put all the rest of the stuffing that didn't make it into the bird. Go ahead and put it in the pan. Put the rack on top. Close up the bird. There's usually some kind of plastic that you can use to close up the legs. Then I like to take some garlic flavored olive oil and rub it over the skin on the top of the bird. It gives it a little bit of flavor and it helps with the browning and the gloss. I also like to tuck a little clove of garlic under each wing to help flavor the bird. And now here's something you want to consider. Turkeys will cook. The dark meat has to cook to 185. The breast has to cook to 165. If you cook it like this the whole time, the breast is going to be done before the dark meat. And if you cook it until the dark meat's done, the breast will get dry. So what I do is I turn the bird upside down for the first two hours. And that helps cook the dark meat quicker. And then you turn it right side up after that and you go ahead and finish off the breast and it should be everything done at around the same time. So I'm going to turn this upside down. I'm going to go ahead and stick my meat thermometer in there so that we have something to gauge the temperature of the bird and then we'll go ahead and we'll bake it. All right, stick the meat thermometer into the thickest part of the thigh Make sure you're not hitting any bone when you do it. Our turkey right now is 54 degrees. You want this to reach 185, but it's going to be about three to four hours. This is a 12 pound turkey. So let's go ahead and get this into the oven. All right. Let's come back in about two hours and we'll see how it looks. As you can see, the turkey's cooked a good part of the way. It's at 145 degrees in the dark meat right now, and so it's ready to flip over. Say something. So as you can see, here's the turkey. It's been flipped. It's back in the oven. I'll put a little bit of the beef consomme on top to baste it. Whether to baste or not baste is an issue. Now we're going to cook it until the dark meat's 185. I like So as you can see, the bird looks beautiful. It's perfect temperature, 165 at the top, 185 at the bottom. As I thought, the stuffing is only at 160. It needs to be at 170 in order for it to be safe. So I'm going to take it out of the bird, put it in a bowl, stick the bowl back in the oven, and heat that up to 170 so that the stuffing is completely cooked. And uh, then we can go ahead, we'll make the gravy, we'll get everything finalized. Another thing is at the very minimum, the bird needs to rest for 20 minutes to let it reabsorb all the juices before it's done and ready to eat. So that gives us time to make the gravy, to cook the stuffing, and to get it all ready. As you see, there's a lot of juice left in the pan. We're going to use that to make the gravy. We're also going to take these onions, throw that in the gravy. We're going to add a little bit of stock to it and 
get the volume up, and then we will turn it into a nice gravy. Okay, so I took all the juices from the pan, I poured it into the pot. Now you want to season that up so it tastes good, because this is going to become the gravy. I'm taking two cloves of garlic, and I'm smashing them into here. I'm also going to add about five sage leaves, and then just about a teaspoon of thyme for the flavoring. I'm going to add chicken stock in. You could also add more beef consomme. Either way, you want to increase the volume of the liquid in here because this will become the gravy. And now let's boil it down and get the flavors together. And you want to put some other flavorings in here. I'm going to put some Worcestershire sauce in here. Consider that about a teaspoon of Worcestershire. Now if you want it saltier, you can add salt. We don't like salt, so it's not going to be saltier for us. Boil this until it's boiling for about five minutes, get all the flavors melded together. And then we want to strain it so that all of the stuff in here, the onions and pieces of stuff, all comes out. Then we'll thicken it and we'll have ourselves a nice gravy. We're going to pour about a half cup of wine into this. Wine always increases the flavor of a gravy. But I said this is a Pinot Noir. Often with a turkey you want to have a Cabernet or you want to have a Champagne. But Pinot goes very well with it as well. We'll drink the wine with the bird as well as using it in the gravy. And of course, one thing you want to do when you're making something is you want to taste it and make sure the seasoning is right. That's good. It's very garlicky, like I like it. Okay, so that's been boiling about five minutes. It's time to strain out all the solid stuff so that all you have left is the liquid. Now that's all the gravy we need. If you need more, you can add some more stock or some more consomme. Now one of what we've done here is we've gone ahead and uh, I've mixed an equal amount of butter and flour. That's about a tablespoon and a half of each. That's called roux. And that's what you use to thicken the gravy. Okay, take your liquid, spoon it into your roux, mix it up to loosen it. And this is how you avoid getting lumps in your gravy. Now that you've got it all mixed in like this, you pour it all into the gravy. Mix that together. And when you bring it back to a boil, you get a nice thick gravy. Okay, so it's ready to go. You want to cut off the leg. Young prefers the dark meat, I prefer the light meat. So she gets the dark and I get the light. Mm -hmm. It's a nice slice of the breast. You want some of the skin with that. I'm going to put a little bit of gravy on that. And I'm going to have it with some stuffing. And of course some of the cranberry sauce we made a little earlier. I'll be right back. Alexa, cancel. All right.
I think Rocky's getting some of this on his dinner tonight. Mm. It's delicious. It's a perfect bird, perfect turkey. The stuffing's great, the cranberry sauce is great. I don't think there's any way we're getting him off the turkey. He's fixated on it. He's hoping that if he stares hard, hard enough, it'll jump off the table and into his mouth. Make whatever else you want as your Thanksgiving side dishes, but this turkey and stuffing will be the star of the show.